Welcome to Gail's Garden Herbs and more. We're going to work a little bit with those herbs today. I need some more chai tea. I love chai tea. Um, but my chai tea is a little different probably than most. Um, some of your root herbs are just slightly bitter, but if you put them in chai tea, you usually don't feel them. Or if I... It's winter time and there's lots of colds going around. One of my favorite things to add with my chai tea mix is elderberries. Um, elderberries are so good. I love, mm, I love the smell. But yeah, I love my elderberries. Um, I might put a little bit in there today since there's a lot of colds going around. Probably to make, um, I don't know, a medium batch. Your main things that you need is like cinnamon sticks, peppercorns, cloves, cardamom. You would probably, if you're going to use tea bags, I'm not using tea bags, I'm using loose. It's usually, I guess, around six bags or so. It depends how big of a thing. I am not going to add the black tea to my mix. I add that later because I like to simmer all my other herbs on the stove in a pot for a while when I'm making a batch up. This I'm just going to put in a jar and keep to make so I have it all mixed together and ready to go. But um, after it's simmered on the stove and then I turn it off and let it set for a while and then maybe warm it back up again and add the black tea and let it set a little bit and meld together and then I drink it. I don't like adding my black tea right away because black tea, if you use it too long, it gets a bitter flavor too. So I don't add the black tea with it right away. I add that when I'm getting ready to actually make the tea to drink. So that's something you might want to remember. That's just something I do. I don't know that everyone does that. I also have a little bit of problem with my heart. So I often add Hawthorne Grays. Now, um, usually what I like to do if I'm going to make my Hawthorne tea, which I need to drink more of, I will soak these hard, hard, I don't know if you can see them, these hard berries overnight in water so they're softer and then run them through my uh, little processor to grind them up. I don't think I'm going to add that this time. I just wanted to show you because often I do add them. Um, they really don't change the flavor that much. Uh, it's kind of a fruity flavor to the Hawthorne berries, but this is so good for the heart to strengthen the heart, and I use this a lot. But um, I've already got a little bit of fruitiness from my elderberries, so I'm going to set these two over here. Something that I always put, a lot of people put anise in their chai tea. Um, and I have done that, but I like, I like fennel better. So, probably, I hardly ever, I'm one of those people that never measure things out and everything always tastes different every time. But, and a lot of times I'll run this through the grinder so that it'll um, do better. But I'm just going to, since with chai tea, this is the fennel seed. But with chai tea, it sets and simmers, and then I just let it set in the warm for a long time, or simmer real slow for a long time on the stove. Um, probably at least 30 minutes or an hour or two. Some people do it even longer, so I'm, that's quite a bit, actually, of fennel seed. But I, I really like the fennel seed, um, so I added some of that. Now, like I said, I like to, I don't, I have a little bit of um, nettle root, but I don't, use that a lot if for a guy if they have a, a prostate problem I understand nettle root's good for that um, I don't know why I ended up with some nettle root because well I just did <laughs> but I probably will I have that in case someone I know runs into that problem I'll probably give it to them to try to make some tea with I did process these dandelion roots myself they're a little bit bitter um, but they're really good for you and um, I often put them in. Matter of fact, I may put a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to put just a, maybe a teaspoon of that in there just for added nutrition and benefit. Um, I don't want too much. Curly dock is wonderful. I processed this also. This is the root. My last video I was telling you how I use the leaves. 
bit. I don't know if you can see. Let me put it in this hand. Move my camera just a little if it doesn't pop out. This camera tends to pop out of here. But anyway, yeah, show you the root up close. That's some curly dock root. It does, I'm sure it does a lot of things, but what I use it for is I cannot get constipated, and I tend to be that way. But with my gut problems, it's not good. So I'm going to add a little bit of that in there, too. And um, one of my favorite, favorite things, now this is a new brand. Um, it doesn't seem, the last package didn't seem to be as strong. I like a good, strong flavor. Maybe it's just me. Um, but this is cardamom. I love cardamom. If you've ever tried cardamom coffee, you, that is awesome. You make some coffee and add your cardamom to it, and it has the freshest, wonderful, wonderful flavor to it. Probably add about, I would say, about six pods. There's four. Depending on the size of the pods, I'm going to put seven. And then um, I need to seal that now. That's been opened. It was sealed. I don't want to lose the flavor. Since it's open, I'm going to put it in a little baggie and seal it back up when we're done here because I don't want to lose all that goodness in there. It just kind of dissipates. Another thing that you want to put in that's just a main basic for your chai tea are cloves. Now since this is one that's going to boil on the stove, I'm going to put, um, you have to be really careful if you're not used to cloves, they can be really powerful. Probably should be about mm, 10 cloves maybe. I'm probably going to put a little bit more. I really like mine spicy, spicy, spicy. hope that's not too much. Don't put that many. That's just me. <laughs> um, you would say, why would you put black peppercorn? Um, pepper can be a little bit drying and I don't need to be dried out, but the pepper has pepperine in it and that helps your body to absorb some of these nutrients, so I am going to use it. Um, I don't know, there's maybe, I don't, I'm not going to use, maybe you can see that, maybe, I don't know how many peppercorns, it's up to you. But it's not even a teaspoon, really. I don't like a lot of pepper, but yet I really want it to get, because it does, the pepperine really does help. Cinnamon bark is better. Probably about two cinnamon sticks is what you should use. I ordered cinnamon bark, but I didn't know it was already all powdered. Somehow I missed that, so I ended up with powder. So, I don't really like that idea. I've got to get some more cinnamon sticks for the little chopped up pieces. But since I don't have any, I'm going to put some in here. I like cinnamon. Cinnamon's good to regulate the blood sugar. I don't know. I probably put a teaspoon in there. So, um, gee, that didn't make a whole lot. Did I do that problem last time? It didn't make a whole lot. But I don't like a whole lot at once. I'll probably get a couple. Let's see. I'll probably get... Oh, a couple makings of that. Because what I do, just a second, let me show you what I do. Okay. This is a bottle of my already done up on the stove, the liquid I put in there. And then I can just mix it up real quick in the morning because my mornings are so hurried before my little one comes when I homeschool. Now, I also have a bottle, a jar of ashwagandha tea that I made up, and I'll mix some of the ashwagandha into my chai tea as well, because ashwagandha is bitter. At least mine turns out bitter. Um, but it's so good for you, and my nerves, I really need it. So I'm trying to drink a bunch of that right now. Also, about a two inch stick of ginger. I didn't have any of my fresh ginger still in the pots out there. I haven't harvested yet. What I do is when I get my ginger, I juice it up in my juicer and I put them in ice cube trays that have a covering on them. And then I just pop, when it's cooking, um, when it's done, I just pop one of my cubes of ginger in it. Um, but you can 
cut up and put your fresh ginger pieces if you don't juice your ginger. You can um, chop this up in a few pieces and throw it in there as well. I will, but I'll add mine later. That's that's really a sad piece look looking piece of ginger. So um, then what I'm gonna I love these ovals with the lids lips on it. I don't see any like this for sale. I got these out of antique stores. I must be antique because I can remember these bowls when I was young. <laughs> Let me get a spoon to scoop that in there. Um, yeah. And then I just saved this jar. It had pink Himalayan salt in it. And I will stick that in here. And then some morning I will put depends on the size of my pan as to how much I put. Like I said, I never measure. I just, I like things, I tend to like things a lot more spicy than most people do. So you have to experiment a little bit and go by your tongue, your flavor, what you like. I had just finished the last of mine. I didn't have this much in this jar last time. I just don't like to make huge batches where it's all been loosened up and some of the essential oils and the flavor. I'm just real, real picky about wanting my herbs to have to be fresh so I get the benefit out of them. You might get flavor out of them, but if all the other parts gone, then you don't get the benefit with the flavor. So, I just put it in a jar. I could use a much smaller jar, I see. And then I'll probably get two batches out of that, or maybe one if I want to make a big batch. But it's ready to go until next time. Um, that's a little bit what I do with some of my roots and making it with chai is great. Sometimes I'll just make up a big bunch of chai and I will just put some elderberries in it um, later um, when I'm actually cooking it up. Or if I'm going on a stretch of using my hawthorn berries, I'll use those. But I almost always put my fennel seed in it or I have used anise. Um, you have like your basics that I said. Let me go over that real quick. Your basic is your cinnamon, your cloves, your peppercorn, um, your ginger. Here's the ginger um, and cardamom. What do I do with the cardamom? And your cardamom seeds. That's your basic to put in there. But I like to add the other stuff. Probably not all of it. You might end up with a mishy mashy mesh. And it would probably taste that way in your mouth, so I pick what ones I'm going to put in it. Um, I really need to get this. I like. I had a big, big cup of my chai tea that I already made with some of my ashwagandha this morning, and I didn't taste the bitterness of the ashwagandha at all. Um, and I probably put three quarters, half a cup to three quarters of a cup of ashwagandha in my great big, I have a great big cup that I use. Let me show you my great big cup. Sorry, I'm coming, I'm coming. <laughs> okay, this is my big cup. I mean, it's a big cup. I'm, I drink a big cup of chai in the mornings. I like to sit and sip it and relax before my day begins. But anyway, that's a little bit about how to do that. I hope y'all got something out of this and some ideas. And please give me a thumbs up. Share my video. I'm trying to get them out. I don't have a lot of family and friends in on this adventure. It's just little old me. So I need your help to grow my channel and share with others. And I hope you all have a blessed day. Bye now. Well, maybe by if I can find how to turn this off. <laughs>